literally double my waist measurement. Am I made them a bit big? It's fine. Greetings fellow humans and welcome to another installment in my ongoing efforts to create an outfit for the 2021 Foundations Revealed contest. What are we doing? Well, I asked my patrons what they would like to see me make next, bloomers in a corset cover or a bustle pad, and the patrons have spoken. So today we're going to be making some bloomers and a corset cover. Now I'm not going to be using a pattern for this because from what I can see most bloomers and corset covers are pretty straightforward. They seem to just be rectangles sewn together with a bunch of lace slapped on and a drawstring at the relevant places that need drawstrings. Again I continue my efforts to use recycled or upcycled materials and to that end I have even more curtains. These curtains actually have a material label on them so I know that they're 100% cotton but for this I don't actually want to use the curtain fabric, I want to use the line Lining. However, the lining fabric doesn't feel like cotton to me, so I'm gonna do some burn tests. Burn tests, if you don't know, where you try to light fabric on fire and see how it reacts, because different fibres react differently to flames. I also have some more cotton lace that I bought as offcuts that I'm going to be using for this project. The reason it's very relevant what fibres the fabric are made of is because I want to dye them. We're not just making bloomers in a corset cover. We're making goth bloomers and a corset cover because I'm dyeing them black. As with the other things in this project, I really don't want to make anything that I'm not going to wear in other contexts. So I'm being a bit unorthodox in that these bloomers will be sewn up at the crotch. Traditionally, they would have been open so that people could relieve themselves. I'm going to be sewing up the crotch because my idea is that if I can make these as little gothy historical gems, I'll be able to kind of wear the corset cover and bloomers together during the summer as a kind of historical romper if you will. The walking skirt that I made came together much faster than I expected it to and I'm hoping that these are going to be similar because like I said it is just a bunch of rectangles with some lace slapped on it. Quite a disrespectful way to look at historical garments but hey if that isn't what my entire vibe is. Okay our lace and our curtain fabric has now been dyed and dried and I'm really happy with it. The colour turned out really cool. It's sort of a more blue tone charcoal grey than a true black but I still think it is appropriately gothy and I think it's going to be really pretty. I have two different kinds of lace. One type of lace with two scalloped edges that will be for the upper part and the shoulders and stuff like that and then I have some edging lace that has one flat side and one scalloped side so that will be more for like frills and ruffles. Now the next stage is for me to do some measuring of myself, do some maths to figure out the size that I need the various rectangles to be, lay my fabric out and get to cutting. So I've decided to actually be sensible and do something I very rarely do and make a mock-up. I'm going to use the lining fabric from the curtains. It's a much lighter cotton so it won't be an exact indication of how this is going to turn out but I don't really want to cut into this very nice fabric and suddenly realise I've gotten all my measurements wrong. So for this, underwear that no one's going to see, I'm going to make a mock-up despite not having done that for like basically anything else in this series of projects. So I'm basically going to plot out the measurements onto this fabric in pencil, cut it out, seam it together and if it works then I'll essentially use this fabric as my pattern pieces. By the way, I don't know if I've ever explained this little thing. A uh, knitted stuffed toy I think my grandmother or my great grandmother made. I use a little pin cushion. She's a little explorer and I've had her since I was like a tiny kid basically. She's a pin cushion now. I cut out my mock-up pieces and sewed the necessary seams. I then fit the pieces as best I could and marked any adjustments or darts, cutting the mock-up pieces to the new shape and taking a pattern from the corset cover pieces. I pinned down the back piece of the corset cover pattern and cut it out, but I cut each of the front pieces on a single layer of fabric to ensure the stripes on the two front pieces mirrored each other. I then outlined the pattern in chalk and removed the pattern pieces so I could double check the stripes were straight before cutting the front pieces out. I used a French curve and chalk to draw out the shape of each bloomer leg and, on a whim, decided to make the legs as wide as the fabric would allow. I used a few pins to keep everything in the right place and then I finished cutting out. Hi, we're back. I have all of the pieces of fabric for my corset cover and bloomers cut out and now it is just time to get down to sewing them. 
I've decided that I'm going to stick them together before I start mocking up or cutting up any of the lace. I think this should come together quite quickly. I'm hoping it will. If I speed through this, I can still make my bustle pad and the waistcoat by the deadline. Don't know if I'll manage it, but I'd like to give it a valiant effort at least. I wonder if I should go into like a rocky style montage of sewing stuff. That sounds fun. Let's do that. I'm gonna sew stuff together. I have the majority of this together. I also have the majority of the bloomers together. But now what I need to do, take the turnings on the top and make casing for the drawstring on the bottom and then make buttonholes on this and the legs of the bloomers because I forgot to leave space in the seam for the drawstring to go through at the bottom of the legs. So I'm gonna put some buttonholes in to use essentially as eyelets and then I'll create the casings on the bloomers as well. Then we get to look at what we're gonna do with the lace. Change my mind, gonna do some hand sewing instead. On the inside of the corset cover I trimmed one side of the seam allowance of the darts, folded the wider section over and used a simple felling stitch to secure it into place. I made sure to only catch a few threads of the outer fabric so my stitching wouldn't be visible from the outside of the garment. After that was done, I pressed the turnings on the top edge of the corset cover and used my machine to stitch the turnings in place. So that was a little more stressful than I expected. While I was sewing the turnings on the top of the corset cover, I had two minor catastrophes. Uh, my bobbin ran out and also about 30 seconds after I reloaded my bobbin, my needle broke. So <laughs> sort them both out though and I now have a very nice crisp edge all around the, uh, the edge of the corset cover with like very nice little pointies going on. So I'm very, very pleased with that. I pressed a half inch turn and then a further one inch turn along the bottom edge of the corset cover and stitched along the very edge of that to create the casing for a drawstring. Okay, I didn't do anything else last night because I got tired. We're back and we have buttonholes to do, turnings to make, Pressing and stitching galore. There's some hand felling that needs to be done on the inside of the crotch seam because I want the crotch seam on the bloomers to be flat for comfort's sake. We're well on our way, for sure, but there is still quite a bit to do on them and I want to really steam through this so that I can get the rest of the stuff I want done for this outfit. I feel like I'm very swiftly running out of time. Very swiftly running out of time. I'm gonna press the turnings for the casing for the drawstring on the bottom of the bloomer's legs and on the waist of the bloomers. And then I'll put in buttonholes to put the drawstrings through on the bottom after so I know where the best place to put them is. Yes, that does make sense. To ironing. I failed to film the enthralling process of pressing turnings on bloomer legs, but after I had done said pressing, I turned my attention to buttonholes. I marked where I wanted my top and bottom buttonholes on my corset cover, and then measured the space between them so I could place the other two buttonholes equidistant from all others, and made a mark at each of those points too. If you have seen my other videos, you may know of my deep-seated loathing for buttonholes, but I managed them on both the corset cover and the bloomer legs without too much strife. I then moved on to sewing the drawstring casings for the waist and the legs of the bloomers. Okay, I might have made them a little bit big. They, they are gonna have a drawstring in the waist and in the casing in the leg, but this is, sorry, my shoulder just made a terrible noise. It's literally double my waist measurement. I might have made them a bit big. It's fine. It's fine. Stick some drawstrings through it. And then if it's okay, stick some lace on the bottom of these and hope we have enough. I'm gonna go measure and find out if I have enough. I don't have enough. Okay. Don't have enough. Right, what am I gonna do about it? I can't really redo the seams now because then I will lose the casing. I cannot be bothered. I'm, I'm not unpicking the casings and redoing them. I don't know what to do. Mm. I suppose I could run the 
What's it called? Oh god, my brain is melted. Run the drawstring through this, gather it with the drawstring to a length that I do have enough lace, and then sew the lace flat to that gathered thing, and then it'll just gather further when the drawstring gets pulled more. That would be a way of doing it. F it. That's our best option right now. That's what we're doing. I was absolutely convinced that these would not work and that they were far too big, so I decided to try them on. I really like them. Look at them! They're like really poofy culottes. They're like secret trousers. This is how you avoid chub rub in the summer, children. I love them so much. I want to be able to wear them in this sort of like poofy culotte form. Okay, maybe I don't put lace on the bottom of these and I just reserve all the lace for the corset covers. Corset covers. Corset cover singular. I am going to put a drawstring in them because that means that I can choose the level of culottedness I want. I'm so happy they worked out. I was so horrified and so worried and they're so comfy. It's very secret trousers. I'm so into it. I then went to work pinning the double scallop lace to the top edge of the corset cover and cutting it to the correct size on the front and back of the bodice. You may notice that the lace is gaping outward on the back as it goes around the curve. Don't worry, there is a system to deal with that that shall become clear later. I sewed those pieces of lace onto the outside edge of the bodice, sized up, pinned and sewed arm strap pieces onto the outside edge of the arm's eye, and then hand stitched the loose edges of lace to each other with a half back stitch to anchor them in place. We have one strap on one side of the corset cover and it's looking good. There is quite a lot more to be done, but I am getting a shooting pain in this wrist and as someone with joint problems, that is a very bad sign. That's a bad sign in general. So I need to stop for tonight because otherwise I am going to do myself an injury. I wanted to get this done today, but it's really not worth hurting myself over. You can't go over there. It's illegal. You went down. There you go. Hello, we're back. I have one strap left to put on and then a heck ton of lace ruffles to add. I guess we best get on that, hey? <laughs> Sorry, both the cats are just like hanging out grooming. So I'm basically rolling the cut, so the raw edges of the lace kind of inside itself and taper it and then this rolled edge will get caught in the stitches. It's pinned up. Now we do this bit. You can do it. I believe in you. You can. can. There we go. So close. So close. You can do it. You can do it. I believe. Bring the little machine. Again, after stitching the lace on, I hand stitched the points where the lace met with a half back stitch. I then placed my first pieces of lace embellishment on the corset cover, carefully lining them up, and stitched those to the corset cover as well. I continued adding lines of lace, turning under the outer corners of the cut lace at an angle to give a nice look and so I would catch the cut edge in the stitches to prevent the lace from fraying. Once all seven lines of lace trim had been added, I moved on to marking out where to attach the buttons. I threaded narrow ribbon through the lace of the neckline, ran drawstrings through all of the casings, added four adorable faux pearl buttons to the corset cover, and those last few finishing touches wrapped up this little garment making adventure. about. I really like the things that I have made. I'm excited about them. I think they will be incredibly cute summer clothing. I don't think that they're particularly effective as bloomers and a corset cover. The corset cover is better and does fit in historically with the overall aesthetic, even if it's not, you know, completely accurate. But the bloomers 
realistically needed to be made of a much lighter fabric and I was going to use the lining of the curtains but they were the wrong fibre content for me to be able to dye them. Also this didn't really turn out black, it kind of turned out navy blue, which I'm not the happiest about and I may at some point try and dye them over more black. Although I think to do that I'll need to take off the little pearl buttons to make sure that they don't get dyed black um, because that could happen to plastic things sometimes when you put them in fabric dye. There weren't any massive issues with this one but I did have problems when I was trying to get through multiple layers of this fabric because it's a heavier weight cotton so I had to go searching through Hamish's notions for an appropriately thick sewing needle because I broke two needles in the space in about two minutes. I'm really happy overall with how they've turned out. I think they're really cute. I think they're going to be excellent summer clothes but in terms of being for the purpose that I made them for which was to sort of attempt recreating blooms in a corset cover, mm, bit iffy. I feel like I could have done better. I think I'm going to wear the bloomers more in their wide leg collot form than I will in their bloomer form and I will definitely wear this little top. I think it's flippin adorable. It feels very strange winding down this project because it's been a very big focus for the last little while so I'll have to decide what else I'm gonna get up to. I hope you enjoyed watching me go through this process. If you like this video then give it a like and if you'd like to see what else I get up to maybe subscribe to my channel. I attempt to upload every week usually on Thursdays or Fridays but it is quite changeable for I am a chaotic being. If you'd like to support me and help me keep making videos like this I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Emily Snee where you can get cool behind the scenes tidbits and post project vlogs. If financial support isn't your jam then sharing this video and sharing my channel around also helps me out a lot and is very cool. Anyway I hope everything is okay in your world and I'll see you guys next time. Hi, you're here because you want attention. You are here because you want fuss. I don't know why I'm in a mood like this. I would appreciate if you do not stand directly on the black clothing I'm making and cover it in your very pure white fur. We going? Lining fabric for... God, that's dusty. Stuff and things. Things and stuff.